storage, memory, and call data. Now you've probably seen me use memory sometimes when we are dealing with strings or bytes. And the reason why we specify these keywords is to tell the compiler what type of storage we are dealing with. For example, if we had a string, and I'm going to say this is my string name, and I'm going to declare it as Daniel. Now here we don't specify that this should be storage because it already knows that this is a storage variable. But we need to start specifying what storage we use whenever we deal with functions. So let me create a new function and this function I'm going to say my func. And for this function it's going to be public and it's simply going to return something. It's going to return a string. Now we have an error and the error explicitly says that the data location must be memory or call data. Let's look at memory first. Memory is the memory available to us when this function is running. And after the function is done running, it will clean that memory. So it's a temporary memory allocation. So to fix this, we can say after the keyword string, return to us string memory. And now it's happy. You'll notice that we don't have to do this whenever we are dealing with uns or integers or booleans. Uh, and that's just because these are value types. Where memory and call data needs to be specified in storage is with strings, bytes, arrays, mappings, and also structs, which we're going to get to. For now, let's take this out and complete our example. Let's say I don't only want to return a string, but I also want to take in a string as an argument, and I'm going to call it my name. Now I have this, and again, it's going to tell us this needs to be memory or call data. So we know memory is temporary memory that's available to us. But what's call data? Think of call data as the input data, this that we are passing to the function. It is kind of like read only, but it's an alternative to memory. So we can either write memory over here and that's fine. Or we can say this should be call data. Read my name from the call data that I pass into this function. So it's up to you to decide. I like using memory. So I'm going to change this back to memory. Now, what happens when we are working with local defined variables inside a function? Let's say we define a new string over here. And I'm going to call it name to update. And this will be the name that I want to update in my state variable. But I'm going to take it from what I'm passing into the function. So this name to update will now be my name. And then below this, I'm going to say my name should now be equal to name to update. Now this is a long way to update the name because we can also do it directly just like so. But just to prove the point, you can see that it's asking us that this now needs to either be storage memory or call data. Now I'm going to make this memory. And now that this is memory, I store this variable in another variable string that's memory. And then we go ahead and update the name state variable, the storage variable. And let's not forget to return. So what I'm going to do is return name to update because I want to see what this variable was before we updated the name. And I'm also going to make this one public. Let's deploy the contract and now look at name. It is Daniel. We can also update the name by writing Ashley, execute it, and now the name is Ashley. Now this is the storage variable that's updating, but first we're storing this in a memory allocation and then updating the name. Let's now see what will happen if we use storage. So I'm going to remove all of this and here I'm going to say this should be storage. Now I cannot just assign this to any random string because we cannot declare storage variables inside of a function. However, we can reference an existing one. Name to update now references the name storage variable. So what do you think will happen if we change the name storage variable and maybe set it to something like Dan? We are not going to use this parameter, but we still need to return. And what we are going to return is the name to update. I want to see what this value will be. Let's go ahead and delete the contracts and redeploy this one. Now we can check the name, it's Daniel. But when we click my func, we don't see anything returned here. However, if we open the transaction, 
we can see it over here. Damn. And this is interesting because we are returning the name to update. Yet, we didn't change name to update, but we changed the original value. And this means that name to update has a pointer. It has a reference to this name. So if we check name now, it is indeed Dan. But later on, when we work with mappings and structs, this will become way more understandable. For now, just know when we say a variable is storage, it's referencing the storage of this contract. Memory is temporary memory that we can work with and call data is the input data that we pass to the function that we can read from.